Union Force. This is AWS On Air, if you're just tuning in. I'm A.M. Grabelny. I'm one of your AWS On Air hosts, and I'm a solution architect here at AWS, joined by my wonderful co-host, Farah. It's been, I mean, what, three now in a row? That, that three, we've, yeah. We've, we've done, this is, I love, this is A.M. and Farah show all day. I love it. Please, tell them who you are, Farah. <gasps> I'm glad to make Chase jealous and get to hang out with you today. So That's hi right. everyone. My hey name Chase. Is, yeah. Hi everyone. My name's Farah. I'm a senior product marketing manager at AWS with a focus on containers and serverless. Super excited to be here today with our fabulous guest from Checkmarks, and I'll let you folks introduce yourselves. Yeah, my name is Pete Chesna. I'm the CISO for North America at Checkmarks. Uh, James Brosses, head of product uh, at Checkmarks. All right, Pete and James. Can you please tell the audience uh, just what exactly Checkmarks is? I know uh, it falls squarely into the world of, of infrastructure as code from my understanding of the product and from my knowledge, uh, but I think there's more to it too that, that you were explained to me before we went live. Please. Yeah, so, so my elevator pitch is thinking about not just finding vulnerabilities, but fixing them and then preventing them. So we're an application security platform and not just application security testing, which is how the market kind of sees uh, these product lines. But we, we've built on the, the idea that we want to help you fix it faster and then we w eventually want to help you prevent those things. I love that. And James, you were telling me a bit about the things that you scan, right? So uh, obviously I knew check marks from infrastructure as code, but you, you let me know a few other components too. Yeah, so we do static analysis. So we're looking at the actual source code itself where we support 25 different languages and its frameworks. We do software composition analysis. We're looking at open source packages, all the vulnerabilities inside those packages, any kind of legal risk that might have it. We can then correlate those results and be like, hey, you're using this open source package that has this parameter in some exploitable way, and we can show you actually how it comes from your code directly into, your, into that open source package. And then the third one that you're familiar with is Kix, which is our infrastructure's code scanning. Yeah, Kix, I know that one for sure. And and how does check marks work? You know, with my current tooling, you know, I might be specific about the things that I like to use and I'm willing to use. So how does that integrate with them? That, that that's a great point. So I come from a develop, developer background, so I'm very heavily focused on improving and using that developer experience. So giving the results in the in their tooling that they're already using is crucial for us. So integrating with GitHub and GitLab, all the SEMs, all the bug tracking tools. It's not just integrating, it's having a seamless automation into it. Um, and then we also have all the IDE plugins as well, so developers can consume results directly within their platform that they use, and then make their remediation in, within, their, within their tooling. And to, and to the point that we had before, it's not just here's a result, you, you've done a bad thing, we now give you the, the ability to figure out how to fix that. Say, hey, here's a five minute video that says, because I know from being a developer myself, Two in the morning, I'm trying to finish the sprint and get the last story done, and I hit a snag. Now what? There's no one up to tell me. Right. So we have the ability to give you that coaching, show you how to remediate it quickly, and then you can move along. Get back to that check mark. That is exactly I, I right. I love the name. I love the name, by the, the great, way. The great thing about our bite-sized training is that you'll go through training and forget it a week later, or a day later sometimes, right? Or while it's happening. <laughs> some people, like me, maybe. So it's bite-sized, so it's about eight minutes long, maybe even shorter. You go through an interactive session, so you can consume it whenever you need to. So if you have to go back to it, you always have it right at your fingertips. That's awesome. Now, Pete and James, you, you said uh, we've got a demo. Uh, I can we actually see it working. Yeah, I can show you a little bit of the platform. So I, <clears throat> I, meant, I mentioned that um, you know we focus heavily on kind of the developer experience, right? So you can start, you can start um, scanning directly from your actual SEMs. So if you have something like, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit of a delay here. So we integrate directly with you know, oh, GitHub you and GitLab, and we hook into your webhooks. So anytime you have a pull request or a push event, we scan automatically. Not only do we scan automatically, but we'll put the results directly into your <clears throat> directly into your um, pull request comment. Oh, nice. So developers don't, when you, when, you, when you submit this, it'll show you what is new and what is fixed directly from that pull request. We're not showing all the results, we're just showing the net new ones. So as a developer, you come and see this, and you can go, okay, I have a new one, I can make an assessment directly from the SEM. I don't even need to go into check marks right now. No, you don't have to leave your, your GitHub exactly. repo. And I think that's the, the way that developers want to consume this tooling, is headless. That's how I do right? it. Right? <laughs> 
I write code and then I get results and I deal with it that way. Yeah. So oh, VS even, code. E even the ID, even the IDE yeah. will show you. We have the ability to triage it. You can, you can change the severity. You can change the state of it. You can add a comment. Oh, and you cool. get a general comment. You get a specific comment about this finding with the attack vector. So if I was to click on the attack vector, if I had the project loaded, it would take me directly to that line of code, and I can go within my IDE and then make make the appropriate remediation. So this is actually telling you how it is a cross-site scripting exactly. uh, vulnerability. And they'll show you from the data coming in to the source and the data going out to being reflected back to the user in a, in a cross-site scripting scenario. Wow, that's really that's really powerful. Um, yeah, and then and as Peter said before, you can also review results directly in here in, in the in the UI, and we have an easy click through our code bashing that does that that five minute to eight minute training, um, and you, you also get that link also in the in the IDE as well. So it's, everything is kind of right in front of your in, on your plate right there if you need that training. I love that, that's really amazing. Um, so that's the uh, code side. Do you have anything else, uh, James, pulled up uh, easily? Maybe the infrastructure's code side that you can show us the scans? I don't um, know if that's too difficult in the it's four not, minutes It's not too have. difficult. It's, it's, it's built in, this, in, in the same workflow. So it's, the scans okay. are being initiated through the, through the pull request and push event. The great thing about our plugin, which I don't have up and running right now, for infrastructure's code, you'll love this, is that we actually scan automatically while you're, while you're developing. So if you, on every single save, we run in the background, Oh, and wow. we'll highlight it kind of like almost a spell check. And then okay. we'll give you the remediation advice in there. You can just click a button and it'll automatically change that line of code. That's super cool. So for example, if you're using like HTTP instead of HTTPS or something, whatever that might be, you click on that button, it'll automatically change that for you. So while you're developing it, using infrastructure's code, it'll give you that remediation advice immediately. And it really the nice thing about what we've done is that one event, code pull request, will run all of the relevant scanning. So anything static that we can look at from the software composition analysis, the uh, detection from software supply chain and malicious actors to, uh, uh, to SCA to infrastructure as code, all of that runs in that one event and you're not doing multi-vendor stuff, you're not opening Jenkins and saying, well, I've got to now go download a plugin and configure it. It's all just, it's low friction. Yeah, it starts in the dev tools, right? right? Before it even gets to the uh, publishing tools, right? Like to the CI CD workflow. Um, that's really great. Uh, now with Kix, um, you know, I love when things integrate into, uh, you know, VS Code is, is my, uh, my preferred choice. So that's very nice, thank you. Uh, what about like uh, CLI experience there? Does Kix have a CLI um, that I could use too? We it's, it's in a Docker container, so you can pull oh, that, nice. yeah you can pull that Docker container from Do Docker Hub and be able to access it. We don't and then the CLI is embedded inside of it. Very very. Uh, and I should mention the one thing about that plugin I mentioned uh, that does the automate automatic remediation. You don't have to have a checkmark license. We provide this free oh. free, free of charge. So Kix itself is Kix.io is an open source project, and the IDE plugin itself is also. Um, completely um, open source. You can download it from the marketplace, and you know, uh, as long as you have Docker running on your machine, you can you can get that you can get those results. Ferry, you know what I always say: if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I say that a lot. But I love that. That's incredible. You say a lot of things. I you say, say he's, he says a lot of things. Sometimes he says Caddy Wampus. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that's for sure. So we're you know we're getting close to time. So what are like what are like maybe like the what is like the three points you want customers to walk away with knowing about check marks? So I think that the first thing is in your digital transformation as you're writing this net new code that we have the technologies and the coverage for all of this new kind of infrastructure, a anything that's, that's coming out and bleeding edge, you know, whether it's API security or serverless or what have you, that we're going to be there with the right tooling to help you understand, prioritize, fix, and prevent all of those uh, vulnerabilities. Get to the check mark. <laughs> Get the passing check marks. I think it's just, you know, we, we really focus heavily on the developer. And yeah. then, you know, we're trying, as a developer myself, I'm, and I use, I use stack analysis in my, in my life, that we're trying to provide the best experience for a developer and making sure that you can write secure code. Because I think we talked about it earlier, it's like developers want to write secure code. Oh, yeah. You know? They do. Yeah, developers care deeply about security, but a lot of the security tooling isn't built for developers. Yes. So it's awesome to hear you all building yeah. a specific tooling for the development workflow. Incredible. Um, and you can go get started with it for, for, for free. Yep. Yeah. It's, like in, it's, in the VS, right now. it's in the VS Code marketplace. Oh, great. Oh, cool. So you can just install it direct from yep. VS Code? Yep. Okay. You, you all have yep. thought of everything. The only requirement is you need Docker. If you have Docker running, that's it. 
Fair enough. I think most, most devs at this point yeah, exactly. probably do. Uh, check marks. Pete, James, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We will be right back with more content here on AWS On Air.